Welcome to Women in the Word, Bible study with women for women. Grab your Bible, have it handy. We are going to dig into the Holy Scriptures, finding hope and encouragement for today. Today's topic is favorite book of the Bible. Mine is Job, but first of all, let me introduce to you my guest for today, Tara Henrich. Tara, welcome. Thank you. It's good, good to, to have here. you. Yeah, thank you. And Alta Austin, welcome to you, Alta. Thank you. Uh, my favorite book of the Bible is Job. And for the main reason that it tells me that nothing happens to me that God does not approve of. Mm -hmm. At least that's what happened in Job's case. There was a meeting of the worlds and Satan was there representing earth. And um, long story short, you'll have to read Job for yourself. We're not gonna read the whole book. But God gave Satan to do just so much, but not kill him. But before we get into that, Tara, tell me a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, I am married to the love of my heart, and we collectively have four children together. Um, I got, I felt that God was calling me uh, several years ago to law enforcement uh, chaplaincy. Um, I saw such a an area of need in that area um, where our law enforcement officers needed that support and that uh, hope. And so I've been involved here in the Valley and also on dispatch calls. Yeah, I bet you're very precious in that position too. I, it's an honor to go to calls where people are in their worst crisis of their life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that is law enforcement as well, or mm -hmm. first responders. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. difficult and hard times for them as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Alta, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a retired church secretary, and um, I uh, take care of our, our granddaughter now, full, pretty much full time and she is the joy of my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm married to a wonderful man. He's a Bible worker. And well, he is, his passion is sharing the love of Jesus with others. Yeah. And uh, then we have two grown sons in their 40s. Again, not sure how that happened, but <laughs> yeah. it did. I don't remember getting any older, but they certainly right. did. Yeah. Thinking 40, how did that? Yeah. Oh, no. And uh, like I said, uh, have a precious three and a half year old granddaughter who uh, just fills our life with joy. And yeah. as I tell people, if I'd known grandparenting would be this much fun, I would have yeah. started there yeah. first. Yeah. And so, and, and as we're older and we're enjoying grandchildren, we uh, tend to be more patient, more, you know, have more time. It's just amazing. Yeah. Not, an, not any more energy, boy. <laughs> my energy level, I think, how did I used to do two? You know, right. my boys were 18 months apart. How did I keep up with two of them? Yeah. You know, so, but it's, it's a joy. And um, I love the Bible yeah. and I love sharing God's word. Mm -hmm. So that's, awesome. my, that's my hobby and passion yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a mother of four and um, I have 14 human beings that call me grandma, believe oh, it or not. How sweet. Seven by blood and seven by what I call love and yeah, circumstance. Right. Yeah. Um, I have four adult children. My oldest just turned 42. Mm. And so I too wonder, what happened? <laughs> I'm 35. Oh wait, no I'm not. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's interesting how that happens. Yeah. I, I was just talking about this the other day with a friend. You know, our minds, it just seems like we, we see ourselves, you know, in maybe our 20s or 30s yeah. and we don't get any older. And yeah. it's like, oh, this just sneaks up. Uh -huh. <laughs> I truly am stuck at 35. Yes. That's yeah. what I feel like until I look in the mirror. I'm exactly. like, oh, Jeanette, you're not 35 anymore. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. With age, we become wiser. Amen. And I don't know about you ladies, but with age, I certainly become closer to my Savior. Amen. I can look back on the trials in my life and know without a shadow of a doubt that God has been there mm -hmm. leading every step of the way, that Jesus has been my friend, yes. that the Holy Spirit has been my comforter. Um, I can just see it. Mm -hmm. And with those trials, and you can look back, it really is a faith builder. Yes. Yes. All right, let's get into favorite books of the Bible. I mentioned that my favorite book is Job. And the reason my favorite book is Job is that it shows me that, that nothing can happen to me that God has not approved of. Um, we can have trials and temptations and we can have heartaches and sorrows, but with all of that, we can know that there are, first of all, better days ahead mm -hmm. and that, that 
God is watching over us even in the midst of this, what I call a test. You know, Wendell used to say, for believers in Jesus, this is our hell. This is as bad as it gets. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's glory. And I can't wait for that day. But I want to read from Job 1, 6 through t uh, 12. Job 1, 6 through 12. This is the uh, English Standard Version. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil? Let's stop right there for just a minute. Job was such a, a standout Mm -hmm. that God noticed him as yes. being blameless and upright. Mm -hmm. He must have been quite the man. Yeah. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Mm. So there it is. God says, if you consider Job, he's a good man. Mm -hmm. And Satan says, he's good and he worships you because you've protected him. Yeah. You know, you've given him all these riches and all these things and you've given him health, but what would he do if you allowed me to interfere in his life? He makes excuses, like if you yeah. throw all these things into his yeah. life, he's not going to serve you anymore. Yeah. It's yeah. not going to be something he does. Yeah. One of the things I appreciate about Job so much is that God knew he could trust yes. Job. Yes. You know, I yes. mean, um, I heard a story years ago about a man, that a Christian man, that um, found out he was going to be blind you know, for the rest of his life. You know, he had a degenerative disease that would cause blindness. And when he shared it with his family, his, his daughter just got up bursting in tears, you know, a college-aged girl, and left the room and went up to her room and just cried and cried and cried. And her father came to her, and, and she says, how could God do this to us? And he says, think of it as a privilege that God can trust us that mm. much, that mm. we will not let go of him. And that's what I see in Job. Yeah. You know, yeah. that he... God could trust him yeah. enough to let him go through this trial. And there is scripture that says that God only gives us what we can handle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just like that story, there's many times when I've said to God, I wish you didn't trust me so much. <laughs> I wish you didn't think I was so yes. strong. Yes. But amen to that. Mm -hmm. And I think fleshing that out just a little bit more, I think there are times when we are given more than what we can handle. However, it's in our own self, we can't handle mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. When yes. we take Jesus along and we mm -hmm. ask him, you know, to, to bear whatever that burden is with him, then it is not that heavy yeah. and we can bear yes. it. Amen. So Amen. I think that's, that's the difference there. That's a very good point. Picking up Job 1, 13 through 20. So what happened to Job? Uh, Satan unleashed on him now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I alone have escaped to tell you. And while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on the camels and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. And while he was yet speaking, <laughs> there came another and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young people, and they are all dead and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose, tore his robe, 
and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshiped. Yeah. Can you imagine that kind of faith? Um, this shows me that innocent people suffer. Mm -hmm. uh, the story of Job, he, this wasn't just a little bump in the road for him. This was total devastation. I mean, can you imagine getting word that your house burned down? And then um, while you're hearing that, someone comes up to you and says, your dog was killed in the road. And while they're telling you that, you get a phone call that your parents have cancer. And, and while they're telling you that, you get a word that, that your kids were killed in a car crash. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the kind of thing. It was right. one after another in a yeah. day's time, mm -hmm. he lost everything mm -hmm. except his wife. Um, yes who we know from the story of Job didn't offer the greatest <laughs> advice. But from this story, um, again, we see that friends don't always offer the best advice, mm -hmm. and yet Job worshiped God. Mm -hmm. yes. He questioned God, mm -hmm. but the Bible says that even in the questioning, that was not sin. No. That through that whole experience, Job did not sin against God. Verse 22, in all this Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. Jeanette, it's just amazing. Years ago I read a book and one of the things, I, it, the book wasn't about Job, but she, she quoted, the author quoted Job. Uh, and I loved what she said and I, I wrote it in my Bible. And, mm -hmm. and so it's there, you know, every time I open the book of Job, may I share that? Please. Um, God is trying to help Job see that there's a bigger plan than just one man and his troubles. Yet the creator of all living things cares enough for that one man to reason with him. Mm. And I just, I see that, you know, yeah. that God showing Job, you know, it's, you know, later on as you read in the chapter, it's not just about you, Job, mm -hmm. but, you know, but God's reasoning takes the time to reason with him. Yeah. And Job never knew that he was on display. Right. You know, right. <laughs> I mean, he won't know until, you know, eternity that, oh, Oh, that was what that was all about. <laughs> yeah. You know. Good point. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Well, and in that whole entire process, he lost his friends. Yeah. He did lose his family, but you know, his friends really made fun of him. Like, mm -hmm. you have this faith in this God that's doing all these things to you, mm -hmm. and yet he trusted that this was for his betterment. Whatever he yeah. was going through was for his betterment. Yeah. And he was going to come out. He he seemed to have this knowledge inside of himself because he'd spent the time with with God mm -hmm. that he was going to come out of it okay. Yeah. It's going to be okay. He had no idea that God would re-prosper him. No. That he'd have more children and yeah. and um, all the riches that God allowed him to obtain again. He had no idea no. that that was coming for him. And the mindset during this time in in the world's history was you know especially in the, the you know the mindset of people that believed in God back then, that if bad things happen to you, that means you've sinned. Yes. Right. You know, that you have done something terrible to bring on the wrath of God, you know. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think people still believe that. But, uh, you know, well, we know that's not true at all. Yeah. You know, we see the story of Job. Yeah. And we see that God is not a, you know, vengeful God, just mm -hmm. looking to wait until we mess up so he can strike us. Mm -hmm. No. You know. No. Satan is the one yes. that we um, need to put the blame paint, on. He likes to paint that picture of God. Yes, yeah. and I love Job's, and you may have bring this up too, in, in uh, chapter two where it says, when Job's wife, you know, is telling, curse God and die, you know, and yeah. he's saying, but he said unto her, you speak as one of the foolish women speak. <laughs> what, shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? And all this did, this did not Job sin with his lips. Yeah, love you that. Know. Yeah. Love that. So well, read the book of Job. Yes. Um, it's rich with um, story. It just, it's a very rich, deep book. Yeah. Tara, what is your favorite book of the Bible? Well, I have several, so this was really a, a difficult decision, <laughs> but uh, the one I chose for today is Esther. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I love the story of Esther for many reasons, but I think one of them is that you know, we're, we are in a time, it seems like, that could possibly look a lot like <laughs> Esther's time. Um, and Esther had to make some decisions what she was going to do. Was she going to, you know, follow uh, the king? Was she going to, you know, keep her head? Because she didn't know what that looked like. 
or was she going to follow the true God that she knew in her heart that you know her family had instilled in her mm -hmm. and she made that decision um, but I, I just love the story you know we we know that um, the king at the time uh, was got very angry at his queen Vashti and he got rid of her and so he asked for all of the fair maidens of his mm -hmm. kingdom to come you know and and be presented in front of him and so Esther uh, her her uncle had known um, that there was a time, a specific time for Esther to shine, be mm -hmm. that shining star. And so he had her come and be a part of those those women that uh, came forward in front of the, the king. And it says, now when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Abilahil, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter to go into the king, she requested nothing but what Haggai, the king's eunuch, the custodian of the women advised, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus into his royal palace in the 10th month, which is the month of Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. The king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. And it, it goes on to say that he, he made a great feast for her. But there was a plot that Mordecai had discovered and realized that it was indeed their own people who were being plotted against, which were the Jews. And, you know, the story really goes into the depth of uh, Mordecai coming to Esther and saying to her, you've got to go into the king. And, as we know from the story, if you went into the king without <laughs> being, you know, asked to summoned, come yes. and summer, summoned, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and he did not put his royal scepter out, then you would be killed. And she said, give me time to pray and let's all pray together. Mm -hmm. What power we see in the prayers that yeah. those people prayed, mm -hmm. um, where a king's heart was completely changed and plots were discovered. Mm -hmm. And she saved her people. Yes. Yeah. But you know, along with that, they prayed, they joined in prayer. There was prayer throughout the land for days and days, yeah. uh, praying for the same thing. And I love this part here. Um, Ahasuerus was impetuous and cruel, the king that accepted uh, Esther uh, gave forth the scepter. But God can work through a wicked ruler. And I think we need to remember that. There's so mm -hmm. much that God can work through. It's all in his plan. Mm -hmm. uh, when we read Genesis through to Revelation, we see that God has a beautiful plan for those who love him. Yeah. Esther was afraid, we see in Esther 4.11, but God's grace was with her, it sustained her, and eventually turned her ashes into beauty. Mm -hmm. if, you're put, if you put your trust in him, he will do the same for you. Amen. And I, this is why this story is so beautiful to my heart. In each time in Earth's history, God has called forth Esther's mm -hmm. to believe, mm -hmm. to be bold, to be um, faithful and true, yeah. and to stand till the end, regardless of if their lives are lost. And Jesus promises a crown of life, Amen. regardless of what happens to us here on earth. Yeah. And you know, we just have to cling to that no matter what we see in Job's story, Esther's story, terrible things happen to these people. And yet, uh, I love the part that she rose from those ashes mm -hmm. and God blessed her and he will bless us. Yeah. We also know from the book that she was a prayer warrior. Mm -hmm. was, yes. Know, and the people that she knew, let's pray about this. Yes. Yeah, and one of the things you know that that amazes me about Esther too was, you know, she wasn't just, I mean, yes, yeah, she was hoping that, you know, maybe she was hoping she'd become queen, mm -hmm. but even if she wasn't, she was still going to be part of the king's mm -hmm. harem. So, mm -hmm. I mean, for her That's to true. put her, you know, uh, no, you know, uh, 
what do you call it, courtship and joy right. of marriage and stuff. She would just be part of the king's harem, That's you know, right. and you know, not knowing that she would someday be queen. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I just see the That's courage really of Esther uh, even allowing herself to be put in that mm -hmm. position. And I mean, you know, people have criticized that. Well, why would you know Mordecai let her do that? But the verse that um, that really strikes me always in Esther is is chapter four fourteen. For if thou altogether holdest your peace at this time, Mordecai is speaking to Esther, mm -hmm. then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and your father's house shall be destroyed. And who knows whether you are come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Yes. You know, yes. I mean, he kind of paints the whole picture here. You know, there's, the Jews will be delivered. And it may not be at your hands, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, but think that maybe this is why you were chosen to be queen. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know the circumstances yeah. in our lives, why we're going through this right now. Mm -hmm. But as you said, Tara, you know, there's times when the Lord can use us when mm -hmm. the hardest trials mm -hmm. are before us. So we were born true. for such a time as this. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's absolutely. So very true. Yeah. What's your favorite book of the Bible, Alta? Oh, my. <laughs> I'm with Tara, like, oh, I have to Which pick. Which one do I pick? Yeah. Well, every night before I go to sleep, I take my phone and I put on a, a, a chapter of the Bible. YouTube has, you know, where it's just mm -hmm. one chapter. I used to try to listen to other things and it would go on and on and on, you know, so hours later. But, mm -hmm. but I like to listen to something, you know, and just listening to the Word. Mm -hmm. And I would say <laughs> more times than not, it's the book of John. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, the book of John in the Bible is just, I just, I, I feel like I personally know John. And I think that's what I love about the book of John. It is written in such, you know, he was right there with Jesus, mm -hmm. as, as was Matthew, but Matthew was a tax collector. He's mm -hmm. more, you know, articulate, you know, well, this happened, this happened, this happened, you know. And, um, you know, Luke wasn't really, you know, he didn't, you know, we don't even know if he knew Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, he mm -hmm. came into the scene later on. Mm -hmm. And Mark more than likely was a young man, you know, uh, you know, maybe a teenager when Jesus, and so later on, you know, he, he wrote as well, but John, John was right there, uh, you know, an eyewitness to all these things. And so John, and he doesn't start out his gospels like the others, you know, he goes all the way back to Genesis, mm -hmm. you know, in the beginning, yeah. the first verse, in the beginning, where do we see that before? Yeah. You know, we see that in Genesis, Genesis. one, yeah. in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and, and the, the word, word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God and all things were made by him. So now we know who made it. It was the word mm -hmm. and who's the word, but Jesus. Mm -hmm. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Mm -hmm. And so it takes us back, you know, the earth was void and without Beautiful. form and dark, you know, and yet Jesus, what does he do? He creates light, yeah. you know, he creates. And so we see in John, the creator, you know, right off, you know, not the baby in the manger, the helpless little, little, we mm -hmm. see him as the power mm -hmm. of the creator. Mm -hmm. And I love that about John. And, and I also many other things I just love, you know, John, John shares, you know, we're women and women were not a big thing in the Bible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, they were sold like cattle, you know, I mean, they, you know, they didn't have that more prominent patient. You know, we have Esther mm -hmm. and we have Ruth and we have, you know, a few other women that mm -hmm. stand out. But for the most part, whereas John brings up relationships that mm -hmm. Jesus had with women mm -hmm. and that would be, you know, his mother, you know, when she asked him to make the wine, you know, the water and, you know, of course mm -hmm. she didn't know he's going to use water, but they're without, you know, she just comes to him. Uh, they're without they're without wine. The wine has run out, you know, like, you know, and, and he addresses her as woman, you know, which if my kids said that I would probably like, <laughs> you know, but you know, but it was she, a loving, it, it was, was. Daring, and it yes, was an, daring. it was an oriental yeah. custom. Yes. That was a, that was a sign of respect. Yeah. You know, woman, what does that have to do with me? You know? Yeah. And yet she says, just, just have him do whatever needs to be done. You know, just yeah. do whatever he says mm -hmm. to do that. And then again, we see him with his mother at the cross, mm -hmm. you know, John, behold your mother. Mm -hmm. Mother, behold your son, mm -hmm. taking care of his mother to the very end, mm -hmm. you know, as much as he earthly could possibly do. And then we see the woman at the well. The verse I sent you this morning Love was that. from that yesterday, that you know. Here's a man that showed me everything and didn't condemn me. Yeah. 
love me. Mary Magdalene, the woman caught in adultery, you know, uh, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. You know, and just down the line, Martha and Mary, you know, I mean, just how Jesus related to women, to his disciples. To me, the book of John is just such a personal account. And I know we're running short time, so I just got to read this last, last verse in John. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written every one, I suppose that the whole world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That just sums it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's healing, there's everything. In the book of John, I mean, if he took every book away from me and gave me the book of John, mm -hmm. I could still would, follow Jesus. It would yes. give you a Amen. picture of our Lord that is precise and exact. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Alta. Well, our time's up. Thank you, Tara. Yeah, it was fast, <laughs> yeah, wasn't it? Was. it? <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. And remember, if you're watching today, and if you have a burden on your heart, if you feel guilt and condemnation, uh, take it to Jesus. Mm -hmm. He loves you. He can take that from you. Ask him to take it from you. He will. He's that kind of, of a savior. Our creator God, the, the the being, the God that created this world is the one that died on a cross for us and wants that very intimate relationship with you Amen. and with me. So thank you for tuning in. This has been Women in the Word. God bless you. Remember, Jesus loves you and he's coming soon.